So in this video, what we're going to be doing is inserting what we get from the web crawler into the actual database itself. So let's get started. So here I am back on our old crawler, and the first thing we need to do is create our SQL connection string. So we do that up at the top, and we're going to be connecting to our database using a feature in PHP called PDO. PDO stands for PHP Data Objects, and essentially what it is, is a database abstraction class. And that means it will work with not just SQL, but it will work with lots of other different types of database. That's not the reason we're using PDO, because we could just use the built-in MySQLi uh, functions in PHP to insert into our database, because we're using a MySQL database. The reason we're using PDO is because one of the best features of PDO is prepared statements. And essentially what prepared statements do is they prevent SQL injection. So what, the way they do that is... Whenever you insert your query, instead of in sending the parameters with the query as part of the one string, PDO will send the query off to the database. It will compile the query and then it will send the parameters separately. This means a malicious user can't modify your SQL query and delete all your tables or do anything like that. They can't modify it. The only other way they could use SQL injection is if they used second order SQL injection, which is where they insert SQL code into your database and whenever you're outputting it back to the user, uh, you make a mistake and then run their code by mistake. So prepared statements prevent the first form of SQL injection, but you always have to be careful when you're outputting any data from the database to prevent not just things like cross-site scripting, but to prevent the other types of SQL injection too. That's why we're using PDO, because since prepared statements mean we don't have to clean our input, we don't have to worry about what the input is because it's just treated as plain text. But the reason we care about that is because we're not actually taking user input, because we're not actually allowing people to insert data into our database, but our crawler is, it's crawling websites and it's not cleaning the titles, cleaning the descriptions or cleaning the URLs. So if we crawl a website and somebody hides some code in the title, if we're not careful and we didn't use prepared statements, that could be a way that somebody could use SQL injection against us. So we're going to create a new instance of the PDO class. We're going to say PDO is equal to new PDO. And we need to pass it a couple of parameters. The first parameter is a string that tells it the type of database we want to use, the host name, the database name, stuff like that. Then we have another parameter, which is the username for the database. And then we have another parameter, which is the password. So in the first string, we say MySQL colon, which means that we're going to use MySQL as the database. Then we say host, and we set our host equal to, in this case, my local machine. If you were using an external host, you would obviously want to point it to that. But since I'm on my local machine, I would normally put in localhost. For some reason, when I type in localhost, it doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is actually put in the local IP that localhost points to. So that IP address is 127.0.0.1. Then we put in a semicolon and then we put in the database name. The database name we just type in is db name and we set it equal to the database. And in the last video, we created our database and called it how search. So we say how search. Then we want to go over to the next parameter and we want to put in our username. So the username is going to be root. And on my local machine, there is no password for the SQL server. So I just put in uh, nothing for the password. So if I save this, we should be just connected to our SQL database now. So what I'm going to do is just comment out this so our bot won't actually start crawling. And I'm going to test the SQL connection. So I'm going to say PDO query. And I'm just going to say select all from index. And I'm just going to run this. You can see we get no output, we get no errors, so therefore that means we should be connected to our SQL database. So what we're going to do is we're going to just delete that and we're going to just comment that back in. So this is the part of the code where we're going to actually insert things into the database. So what we need to do is just go down here and we want to say create a variable called details and say details is equal to get details. L, which means we're getting all the details and we're storing it in the details variable. Then we want to say JSON decode to convert the JSON string that we created in the first part of the series to an array. This is the JSON string here and we're going to convert it to an array. We're going to comment out echo get details and now we have the details stored in an array. So what I'm going to do is print our details and then put a new line at the end of it. And before we run that, we need to just come back up here and take away this comma because that's making our JSON invalid. 
So let's just run this. And you can see, here's the output of our crawler. So what we're gonna first do is check if a website's already been inserted into our crawler. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we'll create a variable and we're gonna call it rows. And we're gonna set that equal to PDO and then we're gonna access the query method. And we're gonna say, select all from index initially. Then what we'll say is rows is equal to PDO fetch column and then what we'll finally do is say echo rows with a new line before we can do that we need to just go up here and make our pdo variable global to give us access to it in the function and let's run this now and before we do that we actually want to say uh, rows is equal to rows fetch column okay so if we just run this now so we get a fatal error so for some reason with PDO, so, uh, I have to put in a back quote around table names. And by doing that, the query will succeed. So if we run this again, you can see we get no output at all. So I'll just stop this now. So I just stopped that. The reason we got no output is because we have no actual rows in our table. If I go and add a row really quickly, just call it test and we run this now what we'll get is one printed out so you can see that's counting all of the rows in the table so in this video what we did was connected to our database and then we were able to count all of the rows in the database what we're going to be doing next is expanding on this and checking if a url is already in the database so thanks for watching don't forget to like comment favorite and subscribe and i'll see you next time